ears or the sense organs that detect and receive sound vibrations and convert these sound vibrations into uh, nerve impulses so due to which we can hear hearing is not only the sole function of ears ears also maintain body equilibrium or balance so here performs two functions one is hearing and it also maintains equilibrium so anatomically ear is divided into three parts outer ear middle ear and inner ear so outer ear has ear pinna and auditory meatus this is external ear pinna so ear pinna receives vibrations of the air produced due to sound then auditory meatus this auditory meatus extend inwards and carry the sound waves to the tympanum or eardrum so auditory meatus is internally i mean along with the external ear pinna the auditory meatus is lined with hairs as well as the wax producing sebaceous glands so wax producing sebaceous glands so outer ear is mean for receiving the sound vibrations and transferring them inwards up to the tympanum or tympanic membrane middle ear is air filled cavity middle ear consisting of three ear ossicles malleus incus and stapes malleus is the hammer incus is anvil and stapes is the stirrup there are three bones these three bones form a bridge middle ear transfer the sound from external ear or outer ear to the inner ear and these three bones acts like a bridge they are arranged or acts like a bridge in this the last bone the smallest one the stapes when the sound waves reaches to it this stapes transfer the sound waves to the oval window so remember stapes transfer the sound waves into oval window that is oval window is the entrance to the inner ear next these three ear ossicles not only transfer the sound waves or pass to the inner ear but they also amplify the sound so uh, if you can observe the pressure air pressure or pressure of the sound at the tympanum to the oval window so actually this is a oval window so almost all the sound is 20 times the pressure is very high this is because the surface area of the tympanum is large than the surface area of the oval window next another interesting point in the middle ear is eustachian tube eustachian tube connects the middle ear to the pharynx middle ear to pharynx is connected by eustachian tube to maintain the pressure or equal pressure on both sides of the tympanum so this middle ear is connected to the pharynx by eustachian tube so that the pressure should not build up in the ear so that's function of the eustachian tube inner ear inner ear is fluid filled which is called labyrinth and this labyrinth is bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth bony labyrinth is with canals or i can say that they are bony channels bony channels these canals are lined with membranous labyrinth and this membranous labyrinth is with perilymph and it is enclosed in the endolymph 
it's it's completely endolymphase enclosed in it next this uh, bony labyrinth and as well as the membranous labyrinth together makes up the inner ear so in the inner ear main actually the organs of hearing as well as balancing organs are present in the inner ear so this is the i mean cochlea is the organ of hearing hearing organs and there are semicircular canals these are semicircular canals semicircular canals so in the inner ear there are semicircular canals and utricle and saccule these are the organs of organs for balance next is the cochlea which are the actual organs of hearing so first we'll be talking about the organs of hearing cochlea and then we'll talk about this uh, balancing organs which are together called vestibular operators or vestibular organs these two together called as so first we'll find out the cochlea now the in the bony labyrinth the coiled part of the bony labyrinth is cochlea fine this cochlea resembles and it is it's a coiled structure it resembles the shell of snail and actually cochlea is coiled so let us find out we'll uncoil the cochlea and find out if you uncoil the cochlea so this cochlea is something like this if it is if you uncoil actually cochlea resembles as one tube but whereas here in cochlea three tubes within it three tubes within it when you uncoil it what are these three tubes called look here this is the one which is called scala vestibuli i'm just making this a scala vestibuli this is called scala tympani and in the middle this is called scala media scala media can also be called as the cochlear duct remember that one it's called as cochlear duct fine so scala vestibuli ends with oval window and scala tympani ends with round window the functions of this two will discuss in the after just after a moment now i said what all these three ear ossicles are present in the middle ear like your malleus incus and stapes this stirrup is connected to the cochlea by connecting to oval window remember stapes is connected to the oval window so all the sound vibrations of the tympanum are finally connected i mean they are they are fine sound vibrations are sent to the oval window fine next this is scala vestibuli scala media and scala tympani the scala media i said which is also known as cochlear duct so i can say that this is vestibular duct and this is called as tympanic duct in some other books it is referred in that way but when you ask for your ncrt you remember this is scala vestibuli scala media this is called scala tympani next scala vestibuli and scala media i was using a separate color scala vestibuli and scala media are separated by resinous membrane and scala media and scala vestibuli sorry scala tympani are separated by a membrane which is called basilar membrane
basilar membrane fine now um scala vestibuli and scala tympani are filled with perilymph scala media is filled with endolymph scala vestibuli and scala tympani are communicated at their apex with helicotrema there's a communication which is helicotrema clear fine now we'll focus on the cochlear duct as i said it's called scala media the roof of the scala media is resinous membrane and the floor of it is basilar membrane fine if you just take out the microscopic structure of the basilar membrane how is it so actually those organs of hearing are located in the basilar membrane so fine i just go into the basilar membrane this is the basilar membrane just look at into this diagram this is basilar membrane So all along its length, this is a basilar membrane, all the way. This is all basilar membrane. So this basilar membrane is with supportive cells. These are the pink colored cells. I'm just calling them as supportive cells. Then are present hair cells. You can see these are all hair cells. I've just colored in black. They are all hair cells. Hair cells are present everywhere. Here I'm just showing you only few cells. But hair cells are present everywhere, all along its length of the scala media. The question comes, why so many hair cells? Because these all hair cells along the length of the basilar membrane are responsible for receiving different frequencies of sounds. If once, if I am making a sound of some uh, like uh, 200 hertz or next time if suppose if I'm making a sound if some other sound if you hear with 500 hertz every time this different I mean frequency of the sound waves are received by different cells hair cells located on the basilar membrane anyway we are not uh, discussing all those things right now so just for your knowledge remember all along its I mean uh, in the basilar membrane what all these hair cells are present, these all hair cells will receive the vibrations, the sound frequencies, different frequencies of sound waves. Fine. Now, these hair cells are on their one surface, one side of the hair cell is provided with stereocilia. Hair cells are provided with stereocilia and at the other end of the hair cell, there are, it acts like axons from where your nerve fibers nerve fibers arise and all these nerve fibers of these bacillus i mean all the hair cells together form cochlear nerve and gets connected to the brain and also on the top surface of this stereocilia of the hair cells is present in elastic membrane called tectoral membrane so the tectoral membrane hair cells with stereocilia right which with supportive cells are placed on the basilar membrane forms the organ of corti which are the organs of hearing clear yeah? so these organs of hearing or organ of corti are present on the basilar membrane so what are the components of it the components of it are all the hair cells which are sensory cells receptor cells what i can say the hair cells and these hair cells one end of the hair cell is with stereocilia then and the other end of the hair cell is with nerve fibers because the potentials are generated there nerve fibers all of them all the nerve fibers will together will form the nerve that is a cochlear nerve which is the branch of eighth cranial nerve and 
all the stereocilia are in connection with an elastic membrane called tectoral membrane. So imagine all these are stereocilia, they are on the top, there is a tectoral membrane, which is an elastic flexible membrane. So together makes the organ of corti. Okay, so now let us find out how the sound waves are carried and how we can able to hear the sound. Mechanism of hearing. It's nothing just uh, you remember all the organs what are present then automatically you get in your mind everything. Listen. Uh, sound vibrations which are produced in the air all the way through the auditory meatus reach the tympanum or eardrum. Tympanum vibrates. The vibrations of the tympanum are received by malleus. Malleus from malleus because malleus keeps on swinging every time because of these vibrations. Malleus from malleus these vibrations are sent to incus. These two bones are jointed by a hinge joint. So from malle incus these vibrations are sent to stapes. Between incus and stapes, there is ball and socket. Fine. Now, this is middle ear. Now, all the way from here, this is the stapes, the foot plate of stapes. We call the foot plate of the stapes. This is stapes. This is all your middle ear. This is middle ear. Now, stapes tap the oval window. So, in the beginning, we have discussed that the surface area of the tympanum is larger and whereas the surface area of the oval window is small. Due to that, the air pressure, I mean the sound vibrations will increase automatically. The amplification is 20 times it gets amplified because of this reason. So, every time your stapes is tapping the oval window. When stapes tap the oval window, it causes ripples in the perilymph. Now, because of these uh, ripples that are present or that are caused by the stapes in the oval window, round window vibrates in opposite phase that set up the movement of perilymph. So, this movement of the perilymph will cause movement in the endolymph. And due to these vibrations in the endolymph, fine. So, these vibrations of the endolymph will be sent to the hair cells and stereocilia. Every time, imagine these are the stereocilia. The stereocilia scratch the tectoral membrane. They scratch the tectoral membrane. Every time when they scratch, because they are in connection with the tectoral membrane, they scratch the tectoral membranes. Every time the vibrations, when they keep scratching the tectoral membrane, they detect their own scratching to the tectoral membrane. Their vibe, I mean, their what do you call uh, their movement, and due to which impulses are generated in the nerve fibers. So due to these vibrations, due to these vibrations, this the stereocilia scratch the tectoral membrane and the hair cells detect their own movement and generate impulses in the nerve fibers. All these impulses are carried by the cochlear nerve in the central nervous system with the previous memory of the sound we can able to detect the sound. Okay. This is how <clears throat> the ear receives the sound vibrations and with the previous memory we can able to detect the sounds.